Hello, hello, and welcome back to the vlog. Today's vlog is gonna be a little bit different <clears throat> in that it's not a vlog. <laughs> I really just wanted to sit down and chat with you guys. Um, maybe, I don't know what to even call this, like a little body image, self image update as I am now. 24 weeks pregnant. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Actually, I've gained a couple of followers more recently. It dawned on me that there's actually possibly people who follow this channel now who have no idea about its origins and my origins on the internet. So uh, this channel used to be called Ladle by Ladle. I actually started it like, oh my God, so long ago, like six or seven years ago, um, as a way to help others recover from anorexia as I had just recovered. I've been recovered from my anorexia for eight years, but my recovery from my eating disorder was probably the hardest thing I did in my 20s, mentally at least, and physically. And it was a really defining moment in my life. Honestly, my illness defined who I was for a long time, and then my recovery from that illness became my new identity Identity, and I created this channel because I recovered really successfully. It was extraordinarily difficult and I just wanted to be a source of support because there were so many girls that I had followed online through my recovery that were a source of support and information for me. So I wanted to be that for others. And that is how this channel started. And so if you're following me more recently and all of a sudden you get videos recommended to you that are like five, six years old that are me like really blonde and five or six years younger going, set point theory and body mass index is bullshit and like all of that. That's totally possible and that's why that happens. I'm not gonna take those videos down. I still get told all the time that they're very helpful for people who find them just now. So anyway, all of that to say, this channel started as an eating disorder recovery account and it started with me just honestly just sitting down and talking about different aspects of recovery, what I had learned, how I had implemented them and how they were helpful for me. And I kind of want to return to that format and talk about something that's a little vulnerable for me because I do think that having these conversations is important and also I think I've mentioned this before but after the baby is born I do want to segue into doing more videos that are kind of in this style where it's just me sitting down and chatting about things that are on my mind that are important probably not eating disorder recovery because honestly no definitely not eating disorder recovery because it's been so long and I feel like that's honestly something that I can't even really speak too authoritatively on anymore things have probably changed a lot in the last eight years I will just leave up the videos as they were when they were but um Certainly body image, self-love and confidence is uh, something that is not necessarily tied to having an eating disorder or recovering from an eating disorder. It's more so just part of the human experience. And it's a topic that I feel like I have a lot of experience in. So for today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Way too long of an intro, Rachel, oh my God. Okay, let's talk about body image. God, where to even begin? I have body dysmorphic disorder. I've had body dysmorphic disorder since I was like, a teenager. Um, and that's basically just where your self image does not match your actual image. I think that's a good way to put it. Obviously having body dysmorphic disorder led me to being anorexic when I was a teenager and in my early twenties, but it's not something that, that went away when I recovered. It's something that I still to this day deal with in just a very different way. Obviously when I was younger, I would see myself, I was never, overweight. Even if I was, it wouldn't have been a problem, but I wasn't. I would see myself and I would see myself as much larger than I really was. That caused me to want to diet, which spiraled, right? Now I still see myself as larger than I am, but it doesn't bother me <laughs> um, kind of at all. <laughs> and that's because of years of therapy and a lot of, of work, which I'll get into in a second. But it's definitely still a thing. Uh, my husband can notice it all the time because I will always buy clothes that are way too big for me, uh, thinking that they're going to be too small for me. That is a nearly every time I shop occurrence. Um, and that is kind of the only way that you, anyone outside of my own mind would ever really see it happening. But it definitely is a thing that I still deal with. Um, the difference being now, <laughs> I'm 30 years old and I am super aware of it. And I honestly think that just being aware of something is half the battle. And by that, I mean being aware that my own self image is not always rooted in reality is enough to keep me from spiraling into negative self-talk, right? So I've had body dysmorphic disorder all of my adult life, but in the last eight years, <laughs> It's not really something that I can say has like been impacting me because I worked really hard and I have a really great handle on my self-confidence. Some people might call me overly confident, narcissistic. 
I call myself that sometimes. But really what that comes from is just years and years of work on what was once an all-time low of self-confidence <laughs> into something that I think everybody should be able to enjoy, which is loving themselves unconditionally. Truly, genuinely, unconditional love for yourself is not always hard because we are always our own worst self critic of ourselves. I would say that like therapy, 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 therapy. I'm always gonna be an advocate for therapy. If you're having issues uh, with negative self-talk, negative body image, uh, negative self-confidence, um, self-esteem issues that are sort of spiraling or even if they're not spiraling, always a reason to see a therapist. Honestly, I think everybody should just go talk to one because we all got issues. So a lot of therapy, but what I've mostly taken from therapy and what's really helped me uh, be the self-confident person that I 100% am today is positive affirmations, positive self-talk, not comparing myself to others, making the daily choice, daily choice to love myself and love my body. And more so than loving my body, having genuine love and compassion for who I am as a whole individual outside of my appearance. Those few things, probably things that you've heard before if this is a road you've been down, but cannot be overstated with how important they are. Um, and they're little things that I actually had to like write them down to think about what it is I do because I do them now so like secondhand. But when I was first starting on this journey, I literally wrote positive affirmations and marker on my mirrors. I had positive affirmation cards that I would go through and I would read every single day and I would look in front of the mirror and even if I really hated what I saw, I would just pretend that I didn't and I would tell myself I was beautiful and I would tell myself I was hot until one day, I don't know, I just started believing it and I believe it every single day. So I have body metamorphic disorder. Even after recovering from anorexia, I still have it, but I have so many tools in my toolbox for maintaining a positive self-image all the fucking time. And I know I can sometimes be annoying by talking about how hot I am, but the reality is I am hot. Um, so I can't fucking help that. And um, that's a choice that I make every day to believe that. I will also say that, you know, beauty is subjective, so you can have your own opinions, but I don't really care, right? Because I so severely love myself. That's my little history on body dysmorphic disorder and my own, and my own self image and how it is so healed and so beautiful. That being said, I am human uh, and I am fallible. <laughs> so uh, I still run up against triggers all the time for behaviors that I haven't exhibited in almost a decade, right? One of my triggers for body dysmorphic disorder is when I cannot pull an outfit together. I know that seems so silly, but dressing well does a lot to aid in your own self-confidence. And my definition of dressing well is definitely not like being stylish necessarily, but just having clothes look good on me. It's a big reason why I have trouble buying clothes a, because I always buy the wrong size. It's funny too, like I will literally measure myself. I have this that I use when I'm online shopping. I measure myself and I compare it to the size chart and I will still buy a size up because I don't, tr like sometimes I will look at the number and I'll go, no, that's not right. <laughs> or it'll fit too tight and it'll trigger me, right? So I often have clothes that don't fit me and I have a, I have a problem with that. And so I know that like having clothes that I like the way they fit on me and that having like a number of outfits that I can just reach for all the time is super important for maintaining my daily choice to love myself and my self-confidence. Now, do I occasionally wear outfits that are fugly as hell and I just deal with it 100% all the time and I'm definitely, before I was pregnant, I definitely at a point where that didn't bother me as much as it used to. I will say that being pregnant, I am having a hard time dressing myself for the first time in a long time. And it is causing some self image issues that haven't really boiled to the surface in a long time. I've done a couple of maternity hauls on this channel and I feel like the things I have gotten for myself, including this light little overall set that I'm wearing right now, are so cute. I've bought so many cute clothes and I have a number of like safe outfits now that I can wear that I know I'm gonna feel really cute and great in. And interestingly, it really has nothing to do with my weight or anything because I feel like pregnancy has made me more confident than ever. I absolutely love having my, my bump, my little belly bump. And um, I don't know, it's not like a physical body issue. It's more of just like quite literally a self-image issue. It's, it's one of those complicated things where 
I keep being told by people, and I agree, not to spend too much money on maternity clothes because you only wear it for a finite period of your life. And, you know, don't why waste the money? Just wear things in your closet that are oversized. But I am having an issue where the clothes I had pre-pregnancy, they were safe in the way they used to fit my body and they no longer fit my body that way. And that has been kind of triggering some um, questionable self-image takes on my behalf. It's so odd because I feel genuinely so confident in this like pregnant body and I am so enjoying being pregnant and looking pregnant specifically. Um, but yeah, I've been having some issues and I would say that it mostly revolves around clothes. I also think that a big part of this is I don't work in an office anymore. I used to, up until just a few months ago, have to get dressed every day and go into an office and look professional and pull an outfit together every single day and do my makeup every single day and do my hair every single day. And now I don't, right? Some days I literally never get out of my pajamas and my hair is unbrushed and... I don't do my makeup, which is honestly great because my skin has been fucking horrible. So it's like best that I don't have to do my makeup every day. I think not having to have a reason to look put together every day is another one of those things where it's like, it's just kind of compiling. It's like, I'm not really confident in the way that I look in my old clothes. I'm trying not to spend too much money on new clothes, but I need clothes that make me feel good because I know that that's a huge key component in my own self-confidence. But also I don't really necessarily have a reason to get dressed up every day. And so I've just been kind of like, I don't know, struggling, I guess, a little bit in that regard. So one of the things I was thinking about doing is just getting dressed every day. Not necessarily like I'm going into an office um, because I literally never leave the house. Like Mario, my husband, takes my car every single day because I don't need it. But, you know, I've been filming more and so maybe just to look nicer on camera would be a good enough reason to dress up and look cute most days. And I was thinking, you know, in December, I'm going to be vlogging every single day. Um, I'm doing vlogmas. I was thinking like every day I want to try and put an outfit together that's really cute. I want to work on this aspect because, you know, I think because I'm so <laughs> self-aware um, about this aspect of myself, my self-image, I can identify the problem. Like, I feel like if I was having, if I was pregnant like four or five years ago, I don't know if I would have been able to necessarily identify the problem and I would have just started to spiral, but I can definitely identify the problem. And so I think what I'm gonna do because I'm doing Vlogmas is every day for Vlogmas, I'm going to make a cute outfit or, and not necessarily like an outfit that's like appropriate for work, definitely not because it's not really my style, but uh, something cute, something fun, maybe something festive and something that makes me feel good. And I'm thinking that by doing that for 25 days at least, I can get myself back on track. Because honestly, before I was pregnant, before I was having issues with my clothes, it wasn't like something that I had to be this cognizant of. That's pretty much it. It's such a wild concept because truly, I'm so adorable. I'm like possibly one of the most adorable pregnant people that's ever existed. And I'm attractive. <laughs> like none of those things, are really coming into question for me. It's just that like, I'm having a hard time, I'm having a hard time reconciling what I know to be true, which is that, that I'm very attractive and hot and cute. Um, and then seeing that in the mirror. And that's just what body dysmorphic disorder is all about, right? But um, it's becoming more of an issue than it ever was before. So that's all. I just wanted to like, give you guys a little insight into my current mindset, um, do a little, old school sit and chat, little by little chat. And yeah, get excited for me looking cute, hopefully in some degree. I'm not gonna make up every fucking day, but you know, have an outfit pulled together every day in December. I think that's gonna be so good for me um, because truly on days where I dressed well and I feel really cute in my outfit, my confidence is at like an all time high, which frankly, can sometimes be at a dangerous level, but it is what it is. Speaking of which, I look really cute today. Let me close this video out by showing you how fucking cute I look today. Hello, I love these little overalls that I have. Look at my bump, I'm so cute. This is a sweater from the holiday video I did on Sierra's channel. I feel so cute. And I did my makeup today for you guys, truly. And uh, well, I didn't really do my hair, but I washed it which is great. <laughs> um, and I put on some jewelry and, you know, I like kind of pulled myself together for this video. I'm literally not doing anything else. Well, I'm working, but I'm just sitting at my desk to work. 
I'm literally not doing anything else besides filming this video in terms of seeing other people. But already, like, I feel like the minute I saw my reflection after I finished getting ready, like, my mood was lifted. You know, on top of all the other coping mechanisms that I mentioned earlier that I've always used to deal with, with having, with giving myself positive self-image, there is something to making yourself feel good. Doing that in ways that aren't just, like, you know internal in ways that are sometimes more external feels a little shallow to me sometimes but genuinely it can do so much good for my soul and that's something I need to remember. I feel like I didn't really make a point in this video. <laughs> I don't really know if I had a point but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!